We are going to look at this right here. Introducing Pickle, I think is how you call it, or Packle. Or uh, I'm sure there's maybe there's some other cool one we haven't thought of yet. A programming language for configuration. Now, here, hold on. You're probably thinking right now, at this exact moment, your first thought must be, great. We were only one programming language away from society being perfect and guess what we got it boys and girls we are official we're we've reached perfection now the reason why i was very excited about this is i heard that they also apple just sit down for a second made support and specifically called out neovim is apple okay hold on is apple is apple changing their ways are we about to see like a a neovim arc coming out of apple tell me that would not be just the coolest thing ever tell me that would not be the greatest day of your life I know it'd be my it'd be it'd be a great day for me because I just love Apple. Okay, I don't love Apple. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love I love NeoVim. Uh, anyways, Apple is NeoVim aligned. Everyone knows that. I know it'd be it'd be exciting. Well, I don't. Well, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that NeoVim will be default in Apple Vision Pro. No way. Really. Dude, I didn't even know these things. This is fantastic. We are delighted to announce that open source first release of Pickle, pronounced Pickle, a programming language for production configuration. I'm very curious why we need it. Okay, so what's also very confusing is they use the term programming configuration. Can I just make, I'm going to, you know, I know people are always telling me that I react too early and I give my opinion without reading. We're going to do it again anyways. Is Pickle going to be more closely aligned with Nix, right? Is this just Apple Nix? Is that what we're about to learn? Uh, when thinking about configuration, it is common to think of static languages like a JSON. Well, it's not really, I mean, yeah, I guess, is it a language? Do you even call in a language, a YAML or property lists, with uh, while these languages have their own merits, I guess you technically isn't a programming language because JSON literally does not have an if statement, right? And so until it has an if statement or a branching logic, I believe it does not is not considered a programming language. I believe that's like, like that's the technical definition. Um, anyways. Um, that's like the easiest technical definition or the layman's technical definition, shall I say. It's not Turing complete would be the technical definition. So the, the layman's one is, does it contain an if statement? Uh, while these languages have their own merits, they, all, uh, they tend to fall short when configuration grows in complexity. For example, their lack of express, uh, expressivity means that code often gets repeated. <laughs> Have you seen any of JSON? Additionally, it can uh, be easy to make configuration errors because these formats do not provide any validation on their own. Hey, thank you, Zaro. Appreciate that. Uh, to address these shortcomings, sometimes formats get enhanced by ancillary tools that add special logic. For example, perhaps there's a need to make code more dry. Okay, hey. Yo. Let's be careful about just tossing out the dry word around here, okay? I don't... I don't... I, I, it, I, I don't... OK, I don't need I don't need people abstracting here. I, I, I'm actually pretty unsure that I like this idea already. If, if your goal is to make things more dry in configuration, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Right. I'm, I'm feeling pretty hesitant right now. So a special property is introdu uh, introduced that understands how to resolve references and merge objects together. Oh, Falcor. Nice. They wrote Falcor. Uh, alternatively, there's a need to guard against validation errors. Uh, so some new way is created to validate a configuration value against an expected type. Yeah, usually you do this with like a typed, uh, like a typed value, right? You have some sort of like type number value this, validation that, or some sort of, you know, you pretty much put your configuration as... Uh, or you put your validation as configuration in there, a scheme of some sort. Yeah. Uh, before long, these formats uh, almost become programming languages. Yeah, they're pretty much a programming language because everybody wants to add one. It needs to be larger than this other field. Like the moment you have that, use a programming language. Right. Uh, but ones that are hard to understand and hard to write the other, let's see, on the other end of the spectrum, general purpose programming languages might be used instead like Kotlin, Ruby, or JavaScript become the basis for a DSLs that generate configuration data. I would have chosen Go, but okay. While these languages are tremendously powerful, they can be awkward to use for describing configuration because they are not oriented around defining and validating data. Additionally, these DSLs tend to be tied to their own ecosystems. It is hard to sell. It is a hard sell to use Kotlin DSL as a configuration layer for an application written in Go. I think we can all agree with that. Go mentioned. Let's go. Go mentioned. I think we can all. I, I think we can all agree with that. It would also be a hard sell to have a Go DSL for configuring an application written in JavaScript. Right? You're gonna have a bunch of JavaScript Andes that don't want no Go. You got a bunch of Go Andes that don't want no Kotlin. Right? You could reverse. You could just put two programming languages together and people don't like it. So the only solution is to create a third programming language. <laughs> 
is where we landed. Uh, we created Pickle because we think configuration is best expressed as a blend between a static language and a general purpose of programming language. We want to take the best of both worlds to provide a language that, de uh, that is declarative and simple to read and write, but enhanced with capabilities borrowed from general purpose uh, languages. When writing Pickle, you are able to use a language features you'd expect, like classes, functions, conditionals, and loops. Starting off with classes, we just lost all of the functional bros. Like all of them. It's Terraform. Is, is this, I've n literally never written Terraform. <laughs> Therefore, I'm out. I am so out. Yep, I know. Dude, dude, we're in shambles right now. Uh, you can, uh, let's see, you can build abstraction layers and share code by creating packages and publishing them. Most importantly, you can use Pickle to meet many different types of configuration needs. It can be used to produce static configuration files in any format or embedded as a library into another application runtime. Okay, interesting, interesting. I mean, that sounds useful. I, I am, I, you know, I'm curious. I, I am curious about this stuff. I've never really been in the in, in this arena of programming. I've never been around this type of stuff. I don't even know really know what to look like. It's well, Lua would be more akin to JavaScript, right? Because Lua is. I mean, yeah, I guess you could. Uh, Lua is more akin to JavaScript than it would be to be declarative, right? Because it's a very imperative language. Uh, we designed Pickle with three overarching goals: uh, to provide safety by catching validation errors before deployment to scale from simple to complex use cases, to be a joy to write with the best in class IDE integrations. Okay, so this, obviously this makes things extremely, like this right here, that's that's the best, that will always be a W if, if you're, I mean, it's why I'm completely convinced that TypeScript won the JavaScript battle. Honestly, I'm completely convinced of it because they strove for great editor integration right off the bat. And I think that's honestly what made them win. Yeah, TypeScript, such a joy to write. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a joy to write. I'm just saying to win the hearts and minds of developers, if you don't have good tools, you're, it sucks. Strove? Is that not a word? Am I, am I making up? Am I making up words here? Yeah. Strove, past tense? Yeah. Why, well, how do you not know Strove? No, I'm not looking at that XKCD comment. I already know which one it is. We have 14. We have, four, we have 14 ones. What we need is one more. Now we have 15. All right, so let's look at this. We created Pickle uh, to have familiar syntax developers be easy to learn. Ooh, this is a good move. This is a good move. This is a very good move. Uh, that is why we included features like classes, functions, loops, and type annotations. Type annotations, let's go. For example, here is a Pickle file module that defines a configuration schema for an, ima for an imaginary web application. This file defines types, not data. This is a common pattern in Pickle. We can call this a template. Okay, module application, host, string name, port, uint 16, environment, environment, I don't know what an environment, database. Okay, database is just a class that has, oh, okay, so when they say classes, it looks like they're not really saying class as in the OOP style. They're literally just meaning object. Uh, username, password, host, port, DB name. Okay. Okay. Environment is just a type alias for dev QA prod. Okay. 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 Yeah, more like struct object. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here's the configuration uh, data that might be defined. Amends. Okay. Strange word. Don't even know what that means. Host equals this, this, this. Okay. So you define a template. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, that's actually pretty interesting that you first define like a, a, a the template, as they say, or really you're defining the, you're defining the type, if you will, of what you must fulfill. And then here's the fulfilling of said type. It's like a DTS file. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, 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 it, it wouldn't be like an abstract class. It would be, it, it's, it's more like, a, it's more like DTS. I give it a strong maybe. I'm giving it a strong maybe right now because there's things I really like about this. This must be like effectively inherits or, uh, you know, implements this thing. And then here's the implementation of said thing. Built-in read expression. Uh, by the way, this is super cool. Can we all just take a moment and say that that is super cool? The reason why I say it's super cool is uh, is that I assume that read could be overwritable. And so you have the type of operation you want to do the reading and the key you want to provide. Meaning that you don't have get environment variable. Instead, you have read type and this yeah I, I do I, I do really wish that you know I do really wish that amends probably is better well I guess amends might be different if it if strictly these are for implementing they should have used implements but if you can add to a specification without implementing it then amends is really the correct 
one, but this is more of an implements than an amends. I really like the idea to put secret, uh, secrets and environment variables where every subprocess can spy on it. Uh, yeah, it's great, huh? Uh, okay. It's easy to, uh, let's see, it is easy to create variations of the same uh, base data by amending. For example, let's imagine that we want to run four databases locally as sidecars. This, uh, uh, this uses a, a four generator to produce four variations, each of which amends the base DB and specific uh, uh, and specifies on different ports. Sorry, I, I had I had a stroke. Okay, so we have this thing. We import this guy. Okay, so we're not amending. We're importing hidden DB equals a, a new one of these. Oh, interesting. We create. Okay, whoa. This is pretty. This is it's pretty interesting. Sidecars for offset and list zero through this. If DB port equals that plus offset. Huh. And then you could just YAML that. Here, let's look at it. And, and then you get a sidecars key. Interesting. Oh, that was a great point. Yo, 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 low level learning. That was a great point. Low level learning said that the password gets exposed in the actual generation of the thing. I mean, I guess at some point the password has to get exposed by, I mean, at some point the password is written in text. But this is actually kind of interesting in the sense that it's a language to produce JSON or YAML. Not Tommel or XML, everybody's favorite. Hunter Two as a meme is so perfect. They, this this is a very well written thing. They they they. Why not just use to write TypeScript? The problem about why not? Okay, why not just write TypeScript? The problem with TypeScript is that TypeScript is too expressive, and I do mean that. The moment you allow somebody to write TypeScript, you get to write TypeScript, and therefore, you now get to make an HTTP request. You now get to do anything you want to do. You now get to write all the classes, all the functions, all the functions, producing functions. You get to do all the things that you would do with TypeScript now into this. Now you have to have a build step for your for this. I mean, the, the, this one already has a build step, but at least it's going to be one singular tool that actually has a well-defined build step, unlike the CMake life of TypeScript. Like, there's something better about having, having specific languages for specific tasks almost always tend to be a really like a pleasurable experience writing in. You know what I mean? Like JavaScript for manipulating the DOM is not a bad experience. It really truly isn't. Lua for manipulating Vim UI is not a bad experience. Using a language for why it shouldn't be used usually tends to be kind of like a, a it feels more trudging often. And that's why using TypeScript for everything, you can find that sometimes when you write TypeScript, it's like really enjoyable to use. That's because you're probably using it for it's a good purpose. And if it, when it's like not enjoyable to use, you find that you're now using it for its non-intended purpose, but you're just kind of shoehorning it to make it work. That's kind of like how I always, how I look at things. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, configuration is about data and data needs to be valid. In Pickle, validation is, uh, is achieved by using type annotations and type. Okay, I like this. I like this. I'm liking what I'm hearing, everybody. Can we all agree? What features that make JavaScript enjoyable to manipulate the DOM? Oh, it's completely loosey goosey and untyped. Like real talk, when you're when you're when you're merging a bunch of crap like that, that is a really great thing. Now you use TypeScript to give it some level of sanity, which is nice. But have you ever worked with uh, like a, a heterogeneous type, something that has like multiple potentials? Either you have to have really strong boilerplate code that has these enums, and you have to do lift operations, you have to do a whole bunch of stuff, or you just simply just like type boolean, do the boolean thing. Right, and that's really nice for UIs, and which are pretty loosey goosey. Second thing that makes JavaScript really a delight for using with the UI is that you don't need to have a compiled version that someone has to download and install. Instead, your engine that's already compiled and running goes and requests the next updated version, meaning you can do live patches extremely easy. And that only really works with interpreted languages. Right? Yeah, the, uh, the DOM is super flexible and doesn't crash into oblivion. It, it, they're like meant to. They're meant to like work well. You know what I mean? It's just like Lua. Lua's not a great, like I wouldn't want to do, I wouldn't want to do a serious server in Lua. It's just, I think it's the wrong language, even though I'm great at Lua. I, I feel completely capable of writing a good server in Lua. I wouldn't want to do it in Lua, if that makes sense. In uh, Pickle, validation is achieved uh, using type annotations, and type annotations can optionally have constraints defined on them. Very cool. Here's an example that defines a constraints. Age must be between zero and 130. Damn. Damn, Methuselah's out. Just can't even be defined in this schema. It should have been 969, people. Nice. Uh, name. Am I right on that one? A Methuselah age. 969. Got it. I'm smartest man on the universe. Uh, name uh, to not be empty. Zip code must be a string with five digits. Oh, damn. you, Dude, dude, you F that one up. You F that zip code up. Just, just right up. 
It could be a five digit or it could be a, it could be a nine digit with the dash at the at, between the fifth and sixth. You know what I mean? All right. Unless if you live in the UK, then you're effed as well. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, person. Pickle, module, person, name, string is not empty. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Oh, very lispy. Very okamily. Uh, int is between. String matches regex. You got a production problem. Huh. I mean, besides for the fact that we got a regex in here, and I feel like we got a production problems just, just everywhere, this is, this is, it is actually super cool. This is super cool. Your age will never be a long int. It'll, it, dude, it, it will never even be a short. What's wrong with that? Um, regex is, this is a perfectly fine regex, and I would never have a problem with that. But can we all be real for a second? This ain't the regex you're writing. Okay? It's never been the regex you're writing. In fact, if you even go over to, uh, what's it called? Uh, regex, uh, regex license, uh, licensing.org, I believe I got that correct? I always have to remember how to spell licensing. I can't remember if it's an S or an S. Dude, I, how come I, I can never spell it? One of the typical disasters is enforcing zip code globally using a regex. Like, this is a disaster to do. So, despite this being a simple, for example, and we all agree this regex is well understood and easy to, to get, a zip code globally regex would be a nightmare. It is a true nightmare. Country codes and phone numbers. Yeah. Uh, simple, yet useless. Yeah, exactly. Simple yet completely not even useful. Uh, failing, let's see, a failing constraint caused uh, an evaluation error. Age, negative five, modules, constraint, person is in between this, file person age, age is this. Ooh, great, er oh, great error. Oh, that is a good one. This is nice. Damn, this is nice. This is nice. I like it. Constraints are arbitrary expressions. This allows you the, uh, to author types that can express any type of check that can be expressed in pickle. Here's a, a sample type that must be a string with an odd length and whose uh, first character matches the last character. String, length is odd. Wow, that's such a specific function someone had to make. Character first equals, or chars first equals chars last. Nice. Who here, by the way, calls it cars versus chars? I should call it cars. I should. NPM install is odd. Well, yet the install is even. I should call it cars. Cares? Yeah, cares would be like the correct way to say it. I should call it cares. Here's the reason why I should call it cares, just like you should call it a regex. Here's the reason why. It's short for characters. Care. Characters. Regular expression. Regex. Who cares? <laughs> Jay. Jay, that was that was a pretty that was a pretty funny one. I, 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 Jay. Hey Jay. Hey Jay. Hey Jay. Hey Jay. Hey Jay. Pretty funny. I'll I'll give it to you. The first time chatter coming in coming in chat chat like that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, sharing packages. Pickle provides the ability to publish packages. Uh, let's see and to import them as dependencies into projects. This provides an easy way to share pickle code. Okay, that's this is this is pretty cool as well. I actually really do like this feature. If you had uh, you know a specification you need to be able to launch, say as an internal service on this, you can just say, hey, here's the minimum requirements that you must meet. I like it. This one's including Toml, which is, uh, I'm a little bit confused. Oh, a Toml renderer. Oh my goodness, you can provide your own renderers. You can provide your own renderers, or they just simply didn't give us the option of Toml up here because Toml, why do you got it? Why did you go? Why? Why do you got to have a fourth? Why do you got to have a fourth? Okay, Toml mentioned. Alternatively, they can manage uh, as dependencies of a project. Using a project allows Pickle to resolve version conflicts between different versions of the same dependency within the dependency graph. It also means that you can import packages by simpler names. Uh, amends package project dependencies toml equals uri this thing right here oh you can you can manage your pickle dependencies with pickle kind of feels like you're in a pickle when you do that <laughs> sorry i'm just just genuinely confused sweet okay i mean this is cool uh, let's see it. Sorry. Chats, chats wild. Chats wild. A set of packages that are maintained by us, the Pickle team. These include Pickle uh, Pantry and Pickle uh, Kubernetes. Language bindings. Pickle can also introduce configuration as textual objects. Okay. I like it. I like it. I absolutely do like that. Uh, uh, flip. Take this out. 
take it out flip. Slack mentioned, take it out, take it out, take it out, take it out. Take it out. Yeah, I know. I forgot to P-kill Slack. Uh, sh shut up. Uh, let's see. Uh, for example, the application Pickle example from above generated into Swift, Go, Java, and Kotlin. Pickle even includes documentation co uh, uh, comments in the target languages. Oh. Wait, hold on. What? Import Pickle Swift. Okay, so this must we, we, must, be looking, we must be looking at some... Uh, what are we looking at here? What am, what am I looking at here? The problem is, is I don't know Swift, so I can't tell if I'm looking at Swift or what the hell am I looking at. Oh, pickled register type. Oh. Okay, so this would be something like akin to like a Saturday macro with pickle. Is that fair to say? Oh, go. Yes, okay, type application struct. Okay, so we have all, oh, okay, so you have your pickle configuration in a struct, and then you have your uh, database pickle go. Package application, here's all of this stuff. Okay, oh, look at that. Oh, nice. I like this. By the way, this is such... I feel like I like this better than Saturday. Not performance-wise. I just feel like I like it more. Anyways, uh, environments, go pickle. Okay, we have this package environment encoding. Dev, we have this nice environment string. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Interesting. And so then how, how do all these values come in? Like, well, using code generation is just, oh, this just generates the code. Oh, interesting. So you can actually just straight up generate it. Okay. It's one of the many ways to embed Pickle within an application. Our language bindings also provide uh, evaluator APIs to control Pickle evaluation at a low level. And users are free to interact with Pickle at the abstraction level. That makes most sense for their application. <clears throat> huh. I, I <clears throat> obviously I have never used these things, and so I'm 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 by far at best a layman when it comes to any of this stuff. Um, I'll say, bonus is that it looks like it makes it really easy to interact with the language of your choice and your configuration. It also looks like it it makes it easier to manage configuration because you generate your configuration off of a what appears to be a fairly sane language. The thing I don't like is that it's yet one more level of abstraction. Yeah, exactly. Generated code always makes it simpler. And the thing that I worry about anytime I see these things is that more abstraction levels almost unequivocally makes things harder. But no abstraction Readers. There's some timer. D dude, how much do you want to bet there's a timer on this website? There's a timer on this website that like redoes or fetches something or does something and it breaks dark readers. I dude, I honestly don't even remember what I was talking about. We'll talk about this in a second. We'll talk about this in a second, Theo. We'll talk about that in a second. Editor support. We believe that a programming language is only as good as the experience of writing it. Dude, by the way, this is an incredible statement. I, I, I love this. Uh, that is why we aim to provide best-in-class editor support when writing Pickle in an editor. Users are guided through process uh, the process of filling in configuration data for a given template. Additionally, the editors provide instant feedback if any... Let's see. If any of the values are invalid, documentation is immediately available when called upon. By the way, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I like this. I mean, this all looks really good. This is great, by the way. This is really great. Can we all agree? Okay, so I actually, I may take back how I feel about wrapping, like, th more abstraction in the sense that if this provides the ability to be able to write configuration, with this level of 
like with instant autocomplete, no matter which configuration you're writing and the accepted value list, that could make a bigger difference. It could be good. Change my mind. Uh, VS Code is better language than Rust. I'm not going to change your mind. It's a perfect opinion. Uh, in addition, we are also planning on support. Let's see, planning on supporting the language server protocol, which provides similar level of integration with other editors. Note, we are also releasing two uh, other plugins: our VS Code plugin and our NeoVim plugin. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Crazy. Look at this. Crazy. They're using plug still. Crazy. Dude, this plugin requires NeoVim 5.0. Oh, man. Crazy. Can we just all take a moment to remember that TJ used to get pinged 400 times a day asking when NeoVim 5 was coming out? Remember that? Remember those days? Dude, crazy, dude. This is crazy. This is some old-ass NeoVim configuration going on here. I used to write this kind of code in my NeoVim. Dude, NeoVim has gotten so easy. So much easier in the recent versions. Holy cow. Okay. Um, first off, this is awesome. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This is great. I love that they, they, they're going all in. I, I also think that it's better. We're pl I, I, I will do a, a one word of caution here, though, that planning on supporting the language server protocol and not just doing it, I highly recommend doing it as soon as possible because this drops most of the need. In fact, you don't even need a, need a NeoVim plugin. You just don't even have a NeoVim plugin because you have a language server protocol. You need some thin wrapper for VS Code, if I'm not mistaken. Um, IntelliJ, I think you need almost nothing, right? Uh, LSP makes or breaks a language popularity. It does. It truly does because they're fantastic. Next steps. We hope uh, you like what we've shown so far. Actually, if I... The problem is, is I don't I don't do this type of work, right? I'm not an infrastructure person, so I don't even know how valuable this stuff really truly is, right? It's just my perception of could I find this va uh, valuable? The LSP and the uh, validation a validation language with some basic extensiveness and configuration slash uh, language bindings, I could see this being really cool, right? I it, it seems like it's really cool, but again. Something seeming like it's really cool and looking at something that is very, uh, very awesome in an example does not mean it's actually awesome overall. And what I mean by that is pick any popular front end framework. OK, let's just go with React because, you know, that's the one I like to make fun of, even though React does plenty of things that are very good. Uh, React counter example, right? When you look at something as simple as this, you're just going to go look at it. And you're gonna go. Okay, we do a little. We do a little app. Okay, we have a little bit of this. Okay, this all looks like HTML. Okay, this is really, really easy. Okay, we're gonna do a little counter, a little increasing. Okay, it's 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 pretty simple. That's that. It it looks pretty simple, right? But the reality is, is that when your program expands beyond what they show you, it gets very, very difficult, right? This is all completely reasonable code. Completely reasonable code. I would expect this pretty much no matter what you're doing. You're having it somewhere, right? And so whenever I see anything that just shows me some basic examples, these all look great. It's until I see it in a larger environment. I feel like this pickle, Apple copy of Nix. That's what I said at the very, very beginning. I said that, is this just going to be Nix but Apple? Uh, this has been tried before. There are many other language conf or config languages. The problem is that you're delegating app logic to the config, which eventually breaks. Well, I don't know if that's true. Okay, so I, I actually, I'm not sure if what you're saying is, is true in the sense that you're defining what the config is bound to. I think you're right, though. Like, Nix is great until it isn't. I've seen some things where Nix, once it crosses a certain line, it becomes like, holy cow, what is happening here? Um, like, real, real talk, you're like, you know, like, what the, what, is this the right way to go? I don't think this is the right way to go. I feel like you've jumped the shark once you hit a certain level. It, it's interesting. I really would love to do a, a look into this. You know, if I once the moment I have a use case for this, I'm using it. You know that, right? You know I'm using it the moment I have a use case, though. Anyways, this is cool. Awesome. Great job on NeoVim, by the way. I love to see that. That really also just shows how big Vim is actually getting. It's shockingly getting large. The name is Vim could not have been big if NeoVim didn't exist. That's the thing is that until NeoVim existed, I don't think I think Vim would have always been relegated to a pretty select group of people. It's actually NeoVim that has made it so that it's it's big. Pickle a gen.